Eric Mwade for the weekend of January 31st and February 1st, 2015. Let's take a look at the close on Friday. We see that the markets had a down close at the end of the week there with the Dow down 1.45. NASDAQ was down 1%. S&P 500 was down 1.3. Gold was up 2.2%. We see that crude oil was up 7% and the VIX was up about 12%. For the entire week, we see that the S&P 500 was down 2.77%. We see that the Dow was down for the entire week, down 2.87%. And we see that the NASDAQ was down 2.58%. For the month of January, S&P 500 was down 3% and the Nasdaq was down 2% for the month and we see that the Dow was down the most 3.69%. want to take a look at something here before we take a look at our charts. We go to the weekly charts I think one of the reasons why the market was down substantially this week or the past week is because we see that the S&P 500 did close back below 50 on its weekly RSI and we also saw the Dow do the same thing. So for the week the Dow also cracked below 50 which might explain why we had this big drop for the week. Every time we've had this drop below 50 you see that we have a substantial pullback in the market for that week just like we have strong moves in the market whenever we have a strong push above 50. So above 50 we see this recovery and this is true every time we have that um, movement around the 50 level on the markets. And there's a mathematical reason for that. It actually goes back to how the RSI is calculated. For the RSI to move below 50 or above 50 you need to introduce a large number into the mix so that it can have that reflection of the RSI moving above or below 50. That's why the movement around that 50 level always leads to big swings because the only way you can move the RSI below or above 50 is by introducing a large number into the average so that it can actually move it and swing the calculation to either above or below 50. And of course I'm talking about the RSI formula in front of you and you can see that for it to move above 50 or below 50 you need to introduce a big number into the mix. So that 50 level always tends to be a an area where you can um, see big swings and if you understand this uh, phenomena which is I call the 50 crossing every time you move above that you're gonna get a big swing every time you move below 50 you're going to get a big swing which in my opinion is why we had the markets moving lower substantially this past week and we talked about this throughout the course of the week. And so that's the Dow. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq which did not close below 50. We can see that the Nasdaq is trading slightly above 50 so that opens the question for what happens next week if it chooses to go below 50. If it does then that's going to record another big down week for the entire market and also keep in mind that we could very easily see the market move back above 50 this next week and guess what? Yep, we might have a snapback move to the upside. In fact if you take a look at this two-year weekly chart for the Dow you can see that every time we've been coming to the 50 level over the last couple of years the market has been bouncing back above it so 50 has been a nice level uh, for traders to look for a bounce and for a nice tr swing trade back to new highs. And this has been throughout the last two, three years. This is where the market has been giving you nice entries for a swing trade to the upside. And all this have come with uniform activity below 50 and back above it. Even this one can be called close enough to 50 and a snapback move there. And so depending on how next week or the next two weeks are going to trade or so it will move back above 50 especially with uniform activity something like that then that's going to be good for another reason for the market to move 
high in the coming week. S&P 500 closed just a tad bit below 50, so keep in mind that it has a, an opportunity if it chooses to, to move back above 50 for another swing trade entry to the upside. As you can see, even the S&P 500 has been using the 50 level for support. Uniform activity below 50 back above it, entry point there, and the possibility of this taking place could also happen in the coming week. Okay, let's go to the charts here. We begin by taking a look at the NASDAQ. As far as the NASDAQ is concerned, we still continue holding above the prior weekly closing high. So that breakout going back many weeks ago, this breakout here continues to be intact in that the market is still defending that level and using this as support zone for now, which is holding. On the hourly, excuse me, on the RSI, on the weekly, you draw a simple straight line connecting the lows, extend it, it comes to this low here, through this low, and you can see that's exactly where the market closed at the end of the week. So it can still continue using this line for support. If it bounces on this line, and the fact that it's back around 50, any bounce on this line is gonna be exactly what the bulls want to see. Otherwise, should we crack and trade below that line, maybe now we're in a different type of market. The one thing I should remind all of us is go back and take a look at the most recent highs, which is a red flag, and explains why we've been down, is the fact that the market made higher highs on the weekly time frame, and yet we had this huge multi-month downward sloping line, which was negative divergence. And once this was recorded here, you can see that we've since started trading lower. So maybe if we look back another six months down the road, we might look back and say, damn, we should have known this was a high. So there's a possibility that yes, we've seen major highs in the market and all we are doing here is trading sideways before we have a massive break and we start rolling over. So that's always a possibility, but for that to happen, we need to break this line first. So the bulls, I think, still continue being in control. We take a look at the NASDAQ daily and just to repeat myself here, this line is holding. We talked about this last week, continuous holding. So that looks good. One of the problems with the market is we go back to the most recent high, higher highs in price and lower lows in technicals, which is negative divergence. If you remember and recall back in the day when this happened, when we had this negative divergence, I talked about the 61.8 phenomena. The fact that you made a new high in price, but the RSI did not move above 61.8 was a signal that should not be ignored. And since that is still the backdrop, it might explain now why the market is not as strong as it was. It's not broken yet by any means, but you can see that that could be a reason why we might look back and say, um, those were major highs. Now on the daily for the NASDAQ, we draw a simple straight line right there. And this is where the market has been bouncing. Those of you who follow my analysis, you'll see that I've been talking about the RSI on this level has been where you needed to go long for nice swing trades. Especially if you use my uniformity principle, you can see that the market has been just trading very well after uniform activity below that line and back above it gives you a nice entry point each time. And you can see all these uh, uniform activities most recently. And so we are back in that general area. And also there's another line connecting the lows. So it's gonna take a lot more downside action to break the market because of this line, which is still holding the market together if the market is gonna go down, it has to break that line. Now, that's one of the requirements. If we're gonna break down, this has to be broken. We haven't broken that yet. And also we need to be below this level, which was, which has been giving us nice buy zones. We need to be below those two lines if the market is gonna drop. On the daily for the NASDAQ, it continues looking okay. The one thing I do note is where the MACDs are trading and these are three different MACD settings. So don't be too worried about why, but two different MACD settings, a short-term MACD setting and a 
the default MACD setting. The one thing I do note here, we did close the week trading below zero, which could be just suggesting that the market is not necessarily strong. But is it broken? Not yet. Wanna take a look at the NASDAQ from a long-term monthly view. Let's go back to a long-term monthly view for the NASDAQ. And you can see now, going back many, many years to the 1980s, if we take the highs in 2000 on a monthly closing basis, which was February, the high there was 46.96.69. I've been saying that if the market can't hold above that, then that's bearish. We close below that level, so we start thinking more in terms of possibility of that this market could be due for a serious pullback. Keep in mind, this looks visually like a double top. And double tops and triple tops are notorious for killing markets. So just keep that in mind. Anything below 46.96 opens the door for the markets to go lower. Okay, let's go to the Dow. Dow Weekly. And we can see that on the Dow Weekly, go back to the highs when we were making this high here. Technicals were also not good. We made lower lows on the RSI. In fact, the line was going back like that. So the highs most recently were not good. Explains, in my opinion, why we are pulling back. The Dow is also showing signs of cracking because it is back below 17.279, which was the prior weekly closing high here. And the breakout now is under question because for the first time in many weeks, many months, we are back below 17.279, which is initial signs of a break. Also, we come back to the line of support. And I draw it this way because it's been making a lot of sense for us. It connects this low and this low. And since then, the market has been bouncing on the same line. As you can see, a bounce after that support there, a bounce after this support, and a bounce again. Uniform activity below the line and back above it, it gave us a nice entry there. Also, bounce on the line there, which was this nice entry, which took the market to new highs at this point here. Now we are seeing a different type of behavior where the market is cracking below that line. And this line has been good since late 2011. So since 2011, it's been support until now. So we need to be careful that this could be where the things start rolling over. So that's the bearish view. I'll give you a bullish interpretation of this chart. And it's back to the previous analysis that the market has been bouncing at the 50 level on the Dow also. This is where, with uniform activity, the market has been bouncing back above 50 and for nice swing trades. And so this is, not, this is nothing new. We've been talking about this the last couple of years, that the 50 level is where the market has been using it, especially if you factor in that uniform action back above 50. So you can see that with this move below 50, if the market can bounce back above 50, of, of course, it suggests that you need to be looking for long positions. Take a look at the Dow daily. And on the Dow daily, we see that the daily is back below the prior daily close. Closing high, I'm trying to say. So we had actually jumped above that, had a nice move to new highs. And since then, generally, the market's been using this for support. Now we are back below that. We are inching very close to this drop zone around the 200-day moving average, which could be a target. Uh, on the daily, we see support coming in from this previous support line, just like I discussed on the, on the NASDAQ daily. This is where the market has been bouncing. And just for the sake of those who are new to my work, I'll show you this. With uniform action, market's been coming here and showing support. I can use that as uniform action below that and back above it with an entry there support at each time uniform action there uniform action back above the line entry there uniform action back above the line with an entry somewhere there and most recently on and on support there so this is where the market has been using a support there's no argument there in my opinion and you can see that if you take the line connecting the lows and draw it like that so now we have two lines one connecting the lows there you might wonder why I'm drawing the line through the lows here 
is because it's uniform activity below the line. And I explained that in other videos on my YouTube channel, so I won't go into detail that with about that. And also this line. So there are two lines, this green line and this blue line. As long as the market is holding above that, market should be okay. Let me take those two things off. I want to show you another view. You can see we can argue that we are trading in a, in a, in a channel. The top side, you see resistance on the Dow. So this has been slamming the market down. And every time we come down, we see that the market is bouncing on this line here. So we seem to be in some type of a wedge. And it's only when we move above the wedge or below the wedge that there is going to be some type of directional uh, move that's going to last a while. So we are stuck in a wedge. Tough to tell which way the market is going to decide to go after this wedge is broken. Take a look at the Dow on an hourly chart and just show you where the market has been showing support on the hourly. And so we see that the market has come back to the same level where it's been finding support on this green line. So, you know, tough to tell which way it go. If personally, if what's been going on the last couple of years is to be true, then I would expect that this probably is an area where the market could have a short term move higher. So I'm personal, even though we had a, a bearish close on Friday, I'm not sure that the market has to go down here because we are coming back to levels of support on the hourly. And we can see that also most recently still been coming back here. So yes, the price is below the previous support line. And I'm talking about the prior hourly closing high. Yes, this has been used for support, but now not sure it's holding. So this seems to be a break in the price. But the RSI is not broken in my opinion. And that's, to me, the RSI is more important. So until I see more information, my thinking here is that the market could actually hold steady. Um, if it breaks below the line, and I'm talking about this line, then now we can have a reason technically to assume that, yes, the market is starting to crack. Is it, has it cracked necessarily um, severely? I don't think so. Anyway, let's go to the Dow Transports weekly. In the Dow Transports Weekly, we can see that we did have a slightly big drop on the Dow Transports because it moved below 50, which might explain the 3.7% drop. Now we come to an interesting area of um, reference, which is the 50 level. Ever since the Dow Transports broke out here above 50, so there was a prior line of resistance, as you can see, going back to late 2000 and between 2012, late 2012 and 2011, this line here, once the market moved above that level happened to be around the 50, we had this entry. On hindsight, we can all see how this has been successful in pushing the Dow transports higher. And so ever since then, the market has been using the 50 level for support and a nice move higher recently came here with uniform activity below 50 back above it for a nice move to new highs and so we are back below and slightly below 50. you can see that without adding any opinions here if the market can bounce back above 50 we are going to get a nice move um, off the most recent pullback in the market i want to show you another interesting line and it is just a line going back to 2011. through this slight node is there there was a slight high there extend that line like that. I hope the chart is not too busy for you. And if it is, well, all right, anyway, ever since we moved above that line, which is beginning of 2013, the Dow transports have been coming back to the same ext line extension and finding support. So the, the same line extension, and I'm talking about this line here, extend it. You can see the market has been using that for support. Most recently did the same thing here, which was this nice entry. So we are back to that general line. So the market can also be using this for support. I would like to show this in a clear chart. So let me go and show you the Dow transport without all that noise. So give me a second. Bear with me.
So 2011, let's go back about five years. And so there you have it. So I'm gonna draw the line again. You can see that there's a slight node there. I'm gonna draw the line like that. This is going back to 2010 on a weekly chart. So the same line extension. Hope you can see what I'm getting at is we broke out above this line, which was this entry. And since then, Dow Transports have been using this for support. Uniform activity below the line and back above it as a buy signal. Came close here, almost touched it and bounced, which was this lows. And here, uniform activity below the line back above it, which was those lows. And we are back there. All I am saying is, it is possible that this is where the market could find support as we begin the new week and the new month. If you take a line connecting the lows and connect this low here, extend it, you can see it also comes in contact there. So I think you can't ignore those two lines and don't forget that there's the 50 level where the market has also been bouncing. The fact that the market on its own has decided to come back here, uh, we have to be careful for a snapback move higher is all I am saying. Of course, and of course, qualification being that if the market breaks below those three lines, one, two, and three, if the market finds itself trading underneath those three lines here, then the bears can really get excited because that means that there's possibility of a major push lower. So until we see that, we have to conclude that the market could bounce. If it breaks, we'll see what happens. Take a look at the Dow Transports daily. And on the daily, we are back to the prior support zone. We haven't broken below that. So that's bullish. We also come back to the daily level where the, the Dow Transports have been finding support on that line there or that level. You can see all these have been nice entries on the RSI throughout the years. We've been talking about this. Every time the market would come here, we would mention that this is a possibility for a move higher. You can see all this has been happening with uniform activity back above the line. And that's the principle that I'll be talking. Double bottom there, nice entries there. So we are back there. We'll see what happens. Keep in mind the backdrop. The backdrop is that we made higher highs in price with the declining RSI strength. And the problem is with those most recent highs is that the RSI did not move above 61.8, which is the worst type of negative divergence. So on a long-term picture, maybe we don't come back to the highs. Short-term, the market can bounce. Otherwise, if it doesn't hold above this level, then maybe this is a different market. Um, so we'll see what happens, but that's where it's been bouncing. And if we're gonna be neutral and just analyze the market for what it is, then this is where you'd expect it to move higher. The Dow transports from an <laughs> Dow transports from a hourly. All these things get confusing. All right, Dow transport from hourly. You can see that on the hourly, just like the other market, this is where they've been bouncing on the hourly. And I'm just showing you the most important levels to watch. And so you can see it's back here. If it holds above that, that's good. If it fails, maybe we're in a different type of market. S&P 500 weekly. And I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one just because it's pretty much the same thing. We made higher highs, lower lows on the RSI. And we can see that we are back at the 50 level where I've been talking about where there could be a bounce. No need to repeat that. On the S&P 500, it's been coming back at extremes to this level. So the extreme pullbacks over the last two, three years have been coming back to this level, as you can see. So even if the S&P 500 was in theory to come back and pull back lower and, and still find support here, it would still suggest that the market is okay. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done if this market is going to be broken and we haven't seen that take place. Take a look at the S&P 500 daily. And I'm just gonna show you the obvious, which is where it's been finding support, it's back there. Now the S&P 500 has this wedge, 
connecting the highs and a wedge connecting the lows. So for me, this is something we can watch. In fact, let's take a look at a close at a fresh daily chart for the S&P 500 because I'd like us to use this. So on the daily as S&P 500 daily, shorter term view, if you take this line connecting the highs, draw it like that, connecting the most recent highs on the RSI, you get that that line there. And then there's another line connecting the lows like, whoops, connecting the lows like that. So we're in a wedge. And I want to draw that clearly so that we can all see because this is probably the concluding uh, analysis or at least my conclusion for all this video is we are in a wedge and above the wedge we might have a nice move higher if we can break out above the wedge we might have a nice move higher on the other hand if we don't do that and break below the wedge then we might be truly starting to see the market crack so this is the concluding um, analysis in this video yes we've touched on many things but to me this is summarizing it all that above the wedge is bullish for the bulls and below the wedge is good for bears and since we haven't seen the conclusion why jump to conclusions all right so we'll see what happens s p 500 hourly as my mouth is getting dry from all this jabbering jab 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 talk 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 s p 500 hourly you can see here that this is a line of support where it needs to hold it's back to that level if it can hold above that level then the market bounces switch gears here and go to the neighbors Canadian market TSX and we still continue trading with this declining resistance line connecting the weekly closing high there and last week's weekly closing high and so anything below this is a market that could still go lower remains to be seen if the market is going to do well obviously in theory it has to be above that line of resistance and we see that it is trading around the 50 if it cracks back below 50 in the new week we might get another push to the downside and so we'll see what happens on this one um, but i think the top lines on the this line here is telling us to resistance right now and so we have to look at this more in the sense that this is not strong the Canadian market also last week we spoke about the prior breakpoint. We had drawn a line connecting the previous break like that, and we had said that ever since we broke below that line, we've been having this market come back off the highs. Uniform activity above the line back below it gave you a high there. Uniform activity to the line and back below it gave you a high short term. And now we are here, we coiled above the line and back below it. My thinking is that, you know, that is not very strong. It needs to be above this line if it's going to start building, um, building, it, building and moving higher. Also, obviously, we have this line connecting the highs. So the Canadian market has a lot of work to do if it's going to start moving higher. Otherwise, to me, my interpretation here is that this is more bearish than bullish, even though it has been a little bit sideways as it trades between the 200 the 50 day the 200 day moving average i believe and the 50 so it's trading between the 50 and the 200 day almost sideways but with the resistance on the top side and the fact that the rsi has already shown resistance i think this is more sideways with the bearish slant for it to do well it needs to be above the rsi line of resistance it needs to be above the declining price channel when I go and take a look at the VIX, actually, let's take a look at the VXX. And you can see here that the VXX is showing the possibility, and it's the possibility of a crossover between the 13-week moving average and the 34-week moving average. This crossover could end up being very meaningful and could suggest the possibility that the markets are going to be going down especially if this continues being true i want to show you the opposite and we go back about four years on the vxx and you can see that the last time we had a bearish crossover between the 13 week moving average and the 34 week moving average so 13 
times 34. The last time we had a bearish crossover, this instrument was trading in a split adjusted price at about 600, right now trading in the lower 40s. <laughs> so yeah, so now we are looking at the possibility of the exact opposite bullish crossover between the 13 week moving average and the 34 week moving average. I guess if things are to stay true, it could indicate the possibility of higher prices in the VIX, lower prices in terms of market direction. Another view was to take a look at the VIX on a weekly chart. So let's go to back to the week, uh, to the VIX weekly. And I wanted to summarize what to look for on the VIX weekly. For the VIX, the level to watch is 21.29. If it can move above 21.29, that's the most recent weekly closing high. And ever since this weekly closing high here, this market has tried on multiple weeks to close above that level and failed. So we've had one, two, three, four, almost five weeks of an attempt to close above 21.99. If the market can m push the VIX above that level, then maybe now we are in a trend where the VIX moves higher, the market pulls back. Until we see that, then you can't necessarily be very bullish, be very bearish on, on the market. Uh, the VIX is struggling to hold that level. It's only when the VIX finally climbs above that and stays above that level that the market is going to be truly under pressure. Also, on the RSI, this is where the VIX has been stalling. And it's back generally in that level. And this, uh, this stall point has been on the VIX for a while. Let me just show you that quickly for those of you who are new to my work here, that the VIX has been coming back and stalling. Every time the VIX stalls, the general market was a buy. And here also, we had uniform activity above the line back below it, which was those highs there. Recently came and did the same thing. And now we are back in that general area. If the VIX cannot move above that, then we are going to stall in the VIX. The market's going to be back in play. I want to show you something different, which I haven't discussed. And it is the VIX monthly. We are taking a look at the VXO. So the volatility, the original formulation for the VIX, the VXO, is one thing very important for those of you who are aware of this minimum requirement. We can see that the VXO is moving to three-year highs on the monthly. That opens the possibility for higher prices in the coming months and opens the possibility for lower prices in the market. So the RSI is moving to three-year highs. If we take a look at the MACDs, we can see that at least one of the MACDs if not both, one of the MACTs is at trading at three-year highs. So that's a very good indication that the, the odds are increased that the VIX could do well. In fact, let's take a look at the VIX itself proper. And we can see that on the monthly, the VIX is also showing, let's take a look at 34 months. On the monthly, the VIX is showing a move to three-year highs on the RSI. We can also see that the MACD in fact, both MACDs are trading at three-year highs. And that could be a problem for market bulls. The fact that the VIX is breaking out to all to three-year highs could be a problem long term. In fact, let me show you why it could be a problem. Take a look at the VIX from a long-term monthly view going back to 1990. The last time we had this massive spike in the VIX was in 2008. And of course, we know what happened to the general market. And just to sensitize you to what happened, we can see at that time, coming into late 2007, the VIX moved to three-year highs on the monthly RSI. So do not uh, take this lightly, that this is something the VIX did in 2000, late to mid-2007. That was a warning signal. And at the same time, the MACDs were also moving to three-year highs in 2000 and late 2007, mid 2007, which was a warning signal. We can also see that the main MACD was also moving to three year highs at the time. And all that was a warning signal back here in the day. So we see it doing the same thing now, which opens the possibility for lower prices in the general market in the coming months. Boy, I think I'm getting thirsty. Okay. <laughs> Been talking for like 
half an hour plus. Okay, let's take a look at Apple here. And we go to the, let's begin by taking a look at the daily. We can see that on the daily, or maybe we should look at a fresh, fresh chart. But before we do that, we can see Apple had a nice move higher. We discussed the fact that it came back to the support zone on the daily a couple of weeks ago. So we talked about this being support and could be a reason for it to move higher. It has moved higher. That's a fact. It also came back to the line of support on the daily. If we draw it like that and held, the RSI is held, which is the reason why the market moved higher. Want to take a look at Apple now on a fresh looking chart without all that noise. We go to the daily. The daily failed to hold above the prior daily closing high. And the price that it failed to hold above was 119.0. So the failure to hold above that, in my opinion, is bearish. So that's a red flag. It needs to be above that if it's going to break out. So that is not very encouraging. We also see that it broke the prior break zone before the most recent pullback here. Took place here, draw a simple straight line. You can see it wants to coil back below that line. So anyway, the takeaway here is below 119. It's not looking very strong. It failed to break out successfully. It also had an attempt of moving above the prior weekly closing high and failed, which is another red flag, short term. Talking about just for now, it is not doing what it needs to do. So below or failing to hold above 118.93 is a red flag. And we'll see what happens. We take a look at the monthly. We can see that the monthly is also failing to hold the prior monthly closing high. It did not move above that resistance and that is also at 118.93. So we are seeing here um, an instrument that is struggling to hold a breakout level. That could be a problem. So the more we move away from this number, the more we are going to be open for um, a pullback. Keep in mind, as long as it's holding above 69.1 on the monthly, it is okay. Maybe it's going to be sideways, but I think failure to hold above the prior dailies, weeklies, and monthlies is a problem for the stock. All right, in conclusion here, believe it or not, there's more. <laughs> and I'm going to have part two for you guys who are subscribers, and I'll send it to you in your email. So if you are a subscriber, I'll send part two at some point during the course of the week. Weekend is when I'll send part two. Otherwise, for the rest of the guys who are on the free part of this part one, this is about the end of the video. But for the Dow, it failed to hold above 17, whoops, 17, 828.24, which is the most recent monthly closing high in November. So that failure to hold above that could be a red flag. We see that the Dow is moving above 69.1. So that we're seeing, starting to see some things break in the market. So that's not good. Take a look at the SPX. H2 is failing to hold the prior level where we were watching for a breakout. So that's another red flag short term. And the level on the S&P that it needs to break out for a bullish move. If the S&P, so set an alert for these numbers. If the S&P 500 ever breaks about this level, you want to be long the market because that would be a good breakout. We can see that the S&P 500 is also back below 69.1. And for those of you who don't know this, it has been trading above that level generally since early 2013. And that's why it's been bullish. The more it moves away from 69.1, the more we are due for a major pullback in the market. And we'll conclude by taking a look at the NASDAQ. Again, if you're a subscriber, I'll be sending part two to you uh, sometime this weekend. So we're looking at the, S and, at the NASDAQ, set an alert for the future or for down the road, just in case, who knows? You have to always respect the market to do whatever it wants. And if it ever breaks up, out above this level on the NASDAQ, that was when you really have to be um, long and bullish. For now, it's failing, which is a red flag. We can see it's coming close to 69.1. I have lots of videos on YouTube explaining all these things. So you can just search on my YouTube channel for all these explanations for these numbers. But anyway, so this concludes end of part one. I think 
the best way I can summarize this video is I have to take you back to the S&P 500 daily and S&P 500 daily and I know I've talked about this but just let me conclude that this is where this is going to have to determine which way the market is going to be moving over the next couple of weeks and months. Above that it's bullish, below that it's bearish. Eric Mwather with Mwather.com. Enjoy your weekend. Subscribers, I'll be sending you part two where we look at world markets, U.S. sectors, and some individual stocks. I am out. Peace and blessings.